Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. So welcome to number seven ministries. Uh, today's message is called Trash to Treasure. And there's an old saying that goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, I changed the saying around a little bit, and I changed it to one man's trash is another God's treasure. Because what man may consider or deem to be trash, God can look at it for what it will become in the future. See, man oftentimes is limited by what they see right now. Sometimes men die for a lack of vision. They don't necessarily see uh, what something could yet become. Even when I uh, looked into this location right here, this building, it was dirty. The walls were dirty. It was uh, uh, spiders and uh, just nasty. But I didn't look at it in the current position. I looked at it what it could become. I looked at it what it would be with, with fresh paint. I looked at it what it would be like clean. And see, this is how God sees us. Why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why we were yet trash, Jesus saw what we would become through him. And without him, we all are trash. Without Jesus, we will all remain trash. And without Jesus, we will all go where trash is to go, which is in the furnace, eternal fire. But with him, God can take ugly things and make them beautiful regardless of whether man has the gift to be able to see that. But as a Christian, God is going to encourage you to see the value in other people. Even if someone is dirty or homeless or smelly or poor, God will allow us to see past all those natural things and to see that there is a value of a soul that God allowed you to see. And when we see souls, uh, God calls us, commands us, and demands us as the body of Christ to love one another, not because what we can get in return, but what God will give us in return. And on this PowerPoint, if you could see it, I apologize if you can't see it uh, too well on camera, but uh, trash to live in. So uh, all these things were actually things that someone threw away, but the, the person uh, right here is a gentleman. He actually had a vision. He took what was trash, and he actually turned it into a functioning, operational hotel where people actually live in there. I don't know what it smells like inside. I don't know what it looks like inside, but the man actually established a business off of trash, uh, trash to live in. Someone saw no value in all this stuff, but this man right here saw a vision, and he, what other people rejected, what other people didn't want, this man took and made something beautiful out of it. Have uh, trash to entertain. Again, this was a Pepsi can that someone drank. They used it, and after they used it, they threw it away. Have you ever felt like someone took you and used you, and after they got the good inside of you, they threw you away? Well, God's not going to do that. God's going to use you, and instead of throwing you away, he's going to keep you. And right here we have uh, trash to survive. Now, if you live in old Brooklyn, you live in the Cleveland area, you have seen this. These uh, They're called, uh, what do they call them? Scrappers. Scrappers, you'll see people all around the neighborhood going rummaging through people's trash and they'll take out the metals that are actually having a value. And that's kind of what this guy looks like he's doing. I believe this was in Haiti. Um, and he was probably taking the metal that people didn't see a value in and uh, using it as a job, a source of income. Uh, Luke chapter 16, uh, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In verse 19, it says that the rich man was clothed in purple 
and fine linen. And for those of you who don't know, back then, within the Jewish customs, a purple was symbolic for royalty. Purple was symbolic for kings and for those who had riches. So it says that this man had uh, purple and fine linen. In other words, uh, in today's times, to bring this Bible verse in a contemporary version, uh, in, in layman's terms, it would be like a, a man who was wearing Armani suits and gator boots every day. Thousand dollar suits, right? And that's not necessarily a sin, and I'm not saying that someone should feel guilty for dressing nice, especially if they're dressing nice for the Lord, but this, that if you're more focused on your natural appearance at the expense of others, because Lazarus would not have had to have been labeled a beggar had the rich man took the money that was invested in the suits and put it towards those that, that was hungry. And if you read the scriptures, it said that the man wasn't asking for money. He didn't ask for a, a horse. He didn't ask to live with uh, the man. And the reason why he had sores, I believe, is because he wasn't taking showers. Don't you know that if you don't wash off the salt that comes from your natural body and your pH levels, it will actually corrode your own skin? See, a lot of times homeless people neglect uh, to bathe, neglect to shower, neglect to brush their teeth, and it actually uh, corrupts their own body. We need that we, for our own uh, health reasons, not just to smell good, but uh, uh, health-wise, we need to wash our bodies. And I believe that's part of the reason why this man had sores on him. But the man was a beggar because the rich man was not taking care of his needs. You see someone on the gutter laying with their head, uh, leaning up against rocks, dirty and smelly, and then he's begging for crumbs. You know, I've been homeless before, and I know what it feels like. It's probably you, you kind of want to die. And then if you get to the point where you become comfortable being homeless... This man didn't ask for money. He just said, I want to get the crumbs. And let's, let's see the results of how this worked out for the rich man. When the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side, the rich man also died and was buried. Right. So basically what we see is that Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. The implication is that Lazarus went to heaven. All right, and the Bible says that the rich man, the rich man was in hell, and it says that he was tormented, and it says that he was begging the blind or the poor man, he was begging him to dip his finger in water and put it on his tongue. Why? Because his tongue was on fire, he was burning, he was tormented. And so, isn't it funny how the man who was once begging, now became rich. And the man who was once rich and looking down on the poor man, now he became the beggar. See, God has a way of putting the shoes on the other fit, foot. God has a way of turning situations around. And Joseph said to Potiphar, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. Look at what Joseph went through. Joseph was insulted, rejected by his brothers. It's not Joseph's fault. Maybe Joseph was boastful, maybe. Maybe Joseph bragged, maybe. But is it Joseph's fault that his dad favored him more than his other brothers? Is it Joseph's fault which mother he was born by? Joseph had no part. You can't help what mother you come from. You can't help whether your parents favor you or not. Parents are not supposed to favor other children, but sometimes they do, and it's not the child's fault what the parents do. All right, And so Joseph was tormented, attacked by his brothers. Joseph was thrown into the well. You know, he could have died in that well. He could have banged his head on a rock, but God spared Joseph from dying in the well. He could have died of hunger. He could have, there could have been a poisonous snake in that well. He could have gotten bitten and died. So even in the well, God was good. So after Joseph was rejected by the family, thrown into the well, then sold as a slave, and then after sold as a slave, falsely accused of rape, and thrown into prison. The world, how does the world uh, view someone that you throw garbage into a well? You throw trash into a well? 
You throw, uh, you look at a slave as being the lowest in the world. Trash. You put trash in prison. You don't put the elite society in prison. You don't put the president in the prison. You put the rejected of the world in prison. So Joseph was at one point in time trash. Through a big chunk of his life, he was looked at as trash by his family, by his friends, by his uh, employer. He was looked at as trash but not by God, because with one interpretation of a dream, God took trash and turned it into treasure. And I'm going to tell you that all of us who are being led by Christ, all of us that have the Holy Ghost, all of us that have Jesus Christ as our Lord, we are but one dream away from being treasure. We are but one idea away from being treasure. That's all it takes is one idea from God, one dream from God, one vision from God to completely change our entire life. But I want to tell you just to hang in there. Yeah, you see yourself as trash. Hang in there. Because just like that, just like Joseph going from trash to second in command of Egypt, because he loved the Lord, he trusted the Lord, and God gave him favor even in the trash, even in the garbage can. God still blessed him. And I'm going to tell you, God will give you a peace and joy that past all understanding. If God would have took Joseph and didn't bring him through all that fire and all that tribulation, by the time he became second in command to uh, uh, Egypt, he probably would have turned his back on God because he would have been so full of himself. But God said, no, before I put you in a position, I have to take you through the fire. Before I get you to where I want you to be, I have to try you. I have to test you. I have to prove you. I want you to see that I'm faithful, not just in the good times, but I'm faithful in the bad times. And Joseph experienced that. 